Hello there guys, Colin here. This is a Fender Jagstang and I've been given this to do a little bit of setup work on. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because it has some classic examples of what happens if you don't look after a guitar particularly well. Now I don't mean this guitar hasn't been loved and played because it certainly has, but guitars are precision pieces of engineering and they require regular setup and maintenance. And if you don't regularly set up and maintain your guitar, things can go wrong. And this, again, is a classic example of a whole bunch of things that can go wrong if you don't maintain your guitar to a mechanical standard. I'm going to document some of my work on this guitar so you can see some of the common problems and how to fix them. So this might be a little series of Jagstang repair. The first things first with this guitar, I've taken the strings off, uh, put the bridge in a safe place and given the fretboard a right good scrub because what you often find with guitars that haven't been set up for a while is that the fingerboard is covered in thick brown gunk, dead skin and dirt and sweat and ugh, has just caked itself onto the fretboard. So a good scrub at that and I've got the majority of that off there so it's fairly clean and we're ready to go. One of the biggest factors here was fret buzz. Some of the notes were fretting out entirely on the fretboard and this can be caused by a number of issues. Um, the bridge and the nut being too low are one such issue so that's fixed mainly in the final setup, making sure that those are set to the correct height. Unlevel frets is going to be another one. If the fret, some frets are higher than others, then obviously that's going to cause some notes to ring out. But the big one is how straight is the neck. One of the best ways to get a quick idea of how straight the neck is, is to peer down either side of it along the line of the neck here. And it's maybe not visible particularly on the camera, but this neck uh, does bend quite a bit. It's low in the middle, so it will go sort of whoop, if that makes sense to you. Uh, so that means any notes being played in the middle are being fretted out at the top because this is higher than the middle here. So that needs to be adjusted with the truss rod. Now because this is a, an old fender, uh, there's no truss rod access here. Truss rod access is all under here on the neck. So that neck needs to come off before we can start to tackle that. We're also going to get some real close-ups of these frets here. You can see the notches in them where strings have been dented right into the frets and left pits. Uh, that's not great for playability at all. The strings are going to catch in those notches and it's never going to be smooth. So we'll have to do a bit of fret dress to address that problem. You'll also commonly see these down at the third, second frets where you play D chords. You can see the top three strings have dented into the frets uh, where you would play a D. That's very, very common on guitars if you don't get a fret dress happening, happening regularly. So all these frets need to be looked at very severely. I'm going to look to straighten this neck by adjusting the truss rod. To do that, I'll need to take off the neck. So I'm going to take off the four screw bolts here and obviously keep them in a nice safe place. There's the bridge for this guitar. Always have a container for anything that you're taking off so that you don't lose it. Quite often Fender will put the year of manufacture on the neck there, so 95, this guitar is pretty much 20 years old. Um, it's doing well, but let's see if we can straighten this neck out. The truss rod access point is here at the end. Now tightening this will cause the middle to bunch up and the ends to come down, which is what we want to do to counteract the dip in the middle that there is at the moment. It's important to only move the truss rod in small increments at a time because it is sensitive and you don't want to damage it or the neck, the last thing you want to do is break the truss rod inside the neck. So just do little increments, don't force it at all, and just see if you can get to where you need it to be. Always look back, look back down the neck so you can see where you're going. Now we've hit a fairly common snag. I can't tighten this truss rod any further without risk of breaking it, but the neck is still not straight. So what do we do here? Well, just because the truss rod won't move any further doesn't mean the wood won't. The wood will bend, so what we're going to do is put this neck into a corrective bend with clamps. We're going to clamp it and physically bend the neck, and that will give us enough relief to tighten the truss rod further. Because if we try to do it now, we'll just break the truss rod inside the neck. Now, it really doesn't take much clamping pressure at all to bend the neck, so just a couple of turns and you should be there. And I'm starting to see the neck bulging up in the middle. We'll just do another little twist. There we go. To slightly overcompensate 
for what we need to do. And that's when we're going to take our screwdriver and adjust the truss rod so that we're back to sort of where we need to be. And when we release the pressure, we should hopefully have the neck staying a little straighter than it was before. Perfect. Now getting the neck straight is entirely important for then moving on and doing the fret work. If the neck isn't straight when you start doing your frets, then you just level them uneven and that's completely pointless. So get the neck straight and then move on to leveling your uneven frets. Now of course I've covered fret leveling and fret dresses on the channel a little bit before but we'll just run through it very briefly. I'm going to be using a blue pen because blue pen is very important to mark all of the frets. That way I know when I'm leveling them if I've missed any bits, which bits are high, which bits are low. Make sure I'm getting them all to the same level. And here is the fret leveling file. So it's uh, teeth in one direction and it just and takes off the surfaces of the frets to get them down to a nice level bit and then we'll move on from there. I've started the fret leveling process here so you can see all the material that's been coming off of the frets. You can also see the blue points on the frets here where those are the low bits, so those bits are still low. That's why the blue pen is so important because I can see very clearly which points in the fret are still low compared to the stuff that I've taken off already. So I've finished my leveling process now and I've recolored all the tops of the frets blue for the next process. This is where I'm going to bring in my crowning file. So that's a concave file and I'm going to reapply the shape to the top of these frets. So right now they're flat and I'm going to apply that rounded edge back onto them with this file. Putting the blue back on here lets you see when you're nearly done because most of the blue there has gone uh, just a couple of little spots are still low. So that's the easiest way to see when your fret is recrowned to shape. So that's the frets crowned and polished up. Some of the little nicks and dents are still just slightly visible, still slightly there but to go down any further on these frets there's pretty much no fret left and I'm trying to leave the original frets on here. So I'll uh, leave this for this now, get the rest of the guitar set up and when I'm playing it and testing it out, setting it up, we'll see if these are really affecting the playability and if they are then maybe look at replacing some frets but hopefully can get away with that. It's not anywhere near as bad as it was so it's looking very nice. Uh, that's pretty much the neck for this now. Um, wiring next I guess. But we'll leave that for another video. Uh, remember to subscribe if you want to see more of my content, also available on the Facebooks, Google Plus, Twitter, leave a comment and I'll get on to the working some more of this guitar, making another video for you soon. Keep it loud.